Hey guys, Mark Farashi, Pro Tech Dog Training, out running around getting dog food, doing chores, all that good stuff. Hey, I wanted to do a little yak session in regards to that post that I put out on Buddy. And uh, I didn't have any, I didn't want to make any disparaging remarks around about sport, uh, but it is what it is in that regards. A lot of times they do end up sleeve happy is what they call it, more equipment oriented, that kind of things. But there's a lot of good trainers out there nowadays that build their dogs even within the sport realm where they're, they've got a real dog, you know. Um, so that being the case, I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. And it's all about how you build the dog and what you get into. If you just get into the sport and that's all you do, but a lot of trainers kind of balance it out pretty well. You know, they, they do ring sport. Um, Oscar Moore comes to mind. He plays in the ring sport. He plays with Schutzen. And uh, he, he's all over the place with that dog. He's got his Malinois that he's got. And he, he balances pretty well. I've seen him do some stuff that's a little bit more towards real, crashing into boxes, going through things, the PSA. By the time you get a dog to that level, um, if you built him right and actually put some uh, some pressure on him and, and taught him to handle in real, a lot of times he is going to be real. But has he learned to spit dead? Has that dog done that routine where he actually really is emphasized in that routine of spitting dead? And you can do that a lot of different ways. Spitting dead, in a lot of ways, comes from the conflict of uh, the dog not wanting to let the ball go. So you can do two ball when they're young and saying out right away back into the ball. You can do two tugs, same thing. But if you think about it, you've got a tug, you're playing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You throw the dog's head one way and the whole tug and everything and let it go, that prey's dead. And right away, present another sleeve, another tug, and get him to come back up for that second tug. So in respect to that, you're doing that to be able to get the dog to do a nice out and to be able to get the dog to learn what the word out means and to be able to have no conflict. What is conflict? Well, conflict is what we want out of the animal in relationship with what the dog wants. The dog wants to keep a hold of that. And if you go in and try to grab that item away from them with these high drive dogs, all they're going to do is want to grab onto it a hold of because they want the fight. They want to hang on to that. So you've got to create something that has... Uh, reduces the conflict and takes that conflict out of the game and get him to come back into that second item, right? So that's your preliminary. That's your first step in teaching a dog to spit dead, right? And if you do that sort of thing when they're young and you always have that sort of philosophy, you avoid the conflict in trying to grab it and take it away from the dog, that's going to be a big help when you get to the point of teaching the dog to spit dead in a lot more of a direct manner, right? So um, then... There's a lot of different ways of doing it. That two sleeves is just a creative way that, that Norman's got to work a dog going towards that spitting in the dead, right? Another way of doing it would be to be a higher echelon, would be to have two decoys in two different suits, and the decoy gets one bite, the dog gets one bite, and he's in the fight, and you say, out, help, help, the dog's got to drop and come back to that second decoy, or get redirected into that second decoy. That, in a, in a big way, is spitting dead. You know, the, the decoy, when they teach it, the one that's the first guy that the, you send the dog on is going to end up dying. Prey dies, he just goes limp, and he waits for the dog to out. And as soon as the dog outs, the second one per picks that dog up, gives him the excitement of the game, because that's what he wants, is that fight, right? The more you do that, and you start doing different routines in that regard, the more the dog's going to learn to let go and, and to come back into that second item, right? So that in essence, again, is how you teach a nice clean out and get the dog to have a better... Joker is a good example of it. Joker does not want to let go. He wants to punch again. You tell him out, he wants to hit that sleeve again. So to get him to stop doing that stuff has been a lot of work, but you have to do some creative um, work within the, the, uh, the build of the animal that gets you what you want. You reduce that frustration, you reduce that problem with conflict, and the dog's going to start working for you. We've got Joker doing that um, in the right vein as long as I keep it up. He'll slip back to the same old behaviors, believe me, if I let him, right? So, but that's, I wanted to touch on that a little bit. But there's some, it's an accent point that I do with personal protection. And I want him to have the dog from a young age spit dead and come back up for that second item, right? So it's important because you don't want the dog to be frothing. And then equipment orientation is a big aspect of it. How high is the dog on the... Because all the equipment is, believe me, guys, is just a toy, right? It's just something he wants. And it all starts with play and prey. 
and then we start introducing a little bit of defense and we start balancing it and we start doing what's called channeling drives teaching the dog to toggle from defense back into to pray to pray and play and we what they call channeling drives and that's what gets the dog to learn to accept defense because defense is not where the dog lives he's uncomfortable in that area you have to teach him to accept fight and that knowing that if he gives that commitment that what he really wants which is that toy and play and pray is going to be there as long as he stays with it and you slowly build that you slowly build the fight you slowly build the, the amount of time that you make him go through that duration before you take him to the play and pray i call it toggling right they, they actually call it channeling drives right so that's just a little bit more yakking in regards to that and those that are trainers they understand what i'm talking about and hey if you got some comments please do you know or you could just do a gif like uh, oscar did that got me thinking about all this <laughs> good one oscar all right i'll let you guys go have a good day mark for with protect dog training signing off signing off bye-bye